Cool, all right, welcome back everyone to the channel. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying the videos. So you've recently seen a lot of videos about medical school, university, and all of that shebang. Very nice to see you guys enjoying them. Subscribing, uh, thank you first of all very much everyone for hitting 250 subscribers. Very cool, very enjoyable to see uh, the numbers going up, which is cool. And if you haven't subscribed and you're watching the video, please do just go and subscribe uh, because I want to get to 300 subscribers as soon as possible. Uh, would be very, very awesome. So please do hit that button down below. Now today, we're talking about something different. I know, variety in the channel. Subscribe. Now, the UCAT, if you don't know what it is, uh, the UCAT is an exam that medical schools do um, just before, you know, you apply basically, almost in the summer before. So if you think about it, you've got your upper sixth year and just before that you see your UCAT. Now the UCAT tends to be, uh, well, it is actually, it doesn't tend to be, it is an exam sat by, I think, a lot of people. The reason being most universities need the UCAT as their main examinations. The BMAT is required by a few. I have no idea which ones they are. Um, I know a few, uh, which off the top of my head, like I think Newcastle, Manchester, um, King's College, uh, Southampton, I'm sure, and uh, Liverpool, Keel, Sheffield, Edinburgh. You know, the, the, a huge number use the UCAT. That's the point, really. And it's really important you guys do well in the UCAT because as you can imagine if you don't do well in the UCAT, so the video here is really to help you guys do reasonably well and this is going to be a few tips. Now there are a lot of things I could say in this video but I'm going to try and give you the main tips. You know the ones that you've come here for, you know the big ones, the, the big money tips that people want to know really and uh, I think these are the ones that are the best to take into uh, your vision whether it's learning them, whether it's going over them or whether you're about to sit the UCAT exam. These tips are hopefully ones that you can just incorporate you know or w whichever point you're at you know um so yeah hopefully you do enjoy this video if you do enjoy the video like i said hit that subscribe button down below also like the video and uh, yeah let's get into the video so tip number one a very 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 important tip is to do revision um, and i know what you're thinking mind blown Nani? i wasn't gonna do revision um, I didn't know that was a part of the UCAT exam. Well, surprising, yes, you do need to do revision. Uh, now, why I'm saying this is because revision is such a big part of the UCAT. It's very much one of those things that the more revision you do, the better result you'll get, effectively. Now, hold on, hold on, don't see this, chuck your phone in the bin and go and start doing 20 hours of straight Medify. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you need to do revision. You need to do it effectively, but you do need to do revision. Uh, a lot of resources are out there. They'll be in the description below. A uh, few of them will be popping up here or there. You know, there's one there, oh, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. You know, loads of different resources that you could use. And you might be thinking, you know, a lot of these cost money. Yes, they do cost money, some of them. Some of them are reasonably cheap. Um, you should go for those, I'd say. Uh, if you want to know which ones I used, uh, I'll put that in the description as well, in brackets, or I'll sort of say I use this one. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I really think you should invest in at least one online. The UK is obviously sat on a virtual setting, so it's not really pen and paper, so I wouldn't see why you'd be revising a pen and paper. It's like preparing to go scuba diving by learning how to jump out of an airplane. But, what, what you want to do is to prepare on a computer, uh, a virtual setting, you know, computer, an iPad, a technology device is the best thing to use, really. So whatever you're going to be doing, please do it on a virtual screen so, you know, you, you can actually get used to that thing. My English isn't so good in this video. What I mean is that you, you need to get ready. Blah, you need to... Blah, you need to understand how to do the UCAT on a laptop or any sort of technological devices. A great success! And yeah, that's the first tip really, and um, please do be assured that it doesn't cost a lot of these resources. Some of them are well, well, well pricey. Stay away from that, uh, because it's not worth it. What you should be doing is looking for the reasonably moderate prices. Some of them are free, go for that, obviously. Uh, and yeah, be smart in your money. What else would I say? Well, I would definitely say to time it. So when I say time it and time revision, I'm saying to make sure you're revising at the right time. So if you've got your exam in July, uh, when's the best time to revise? June, May? Not three years ago, not five years ago, 
Not a week before, not a day before, not on the afternoon of the exam. Time it. So you want ideally one to two months. Um, the reason being is because you want to have enough revision and, you know, deep thorough revision, but you also don't want to do too much. Because if you do too much, you'll get to the point where you're really good at the UCAT way, 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 way too early. And that's not helpful, really, because you want to do well at the UCAT when you're going to do your exam. And that comes around the two month point, I'd say. Um, maybe for some people it might come a little earlier, um, but two months is safe. That's a safe, you know, time span. And I would definitely say to be aware of this because some people just do it a week before. Um, I don't know why you would do that. Some people do it five years beforehand and, you know, end up not loving the UCAT a lot, as you can imagine. So please do time revision well. Uh, make sure it's sort of at that right sweet spot, that Goldilocks zone, you know, that that sweet, sweet spot where you're hitting not too much, but not too little revision. And that's very important. That's a key thing. The final thing I would say is to make sure you have good knowledge about this section, uh, abstract reasoning. Now, the abstract reasoning is a difficult section, and if you're good at it, it's likely that you're either lying or you're a psychopath. If you fall into the lying category, you know you're not good at it. If you fall into the psychopath one, and I can't really help you if um, you get you abstract reasoning because I don't know why that is. Um, you really need to be careful um, because I fear for you um, as a person because that's not a thing people are. And human beings were never meant to do abstract reasoning. Uh, Homo sapiens were never, ever meant to do this section. I'll be honest, the exam doing abstract reasoning, I sat there going through the questions and I wasn't actually in the exam at that time. You know, I finished quantitative reasoning thinking, could have gone better, it was all right. Moved on to abstract reasoning and thought, okay, I don't know what's going on. And really, I was just clicking A, I think, sort of like this demented robot just hitting the same key. And believe me, I had no idea what was going on. So how can you avoid this and actually be good at abstract reasoning? Because believe me, it's an important section. Go through it and please do actually do the section. People tend to shy away from it just because they know it's not a great section that they're good at and that they enjoy. So please do actually do abstract reasoning. I mean, if you don't do it, you're likely to just end up not knowing what's going on in the exam. In terms of exact tips, it's very difficult to give for abstract reasoning because it's just such a weird section. It's so different and I still really don't know what I can say to help you. There are a few things. I'll make another video on that section. Um, but really, you just need to do work on that section and just spend a few hours just in depth, you know, getting deep into abstract reasoning. Don't go too deep because if you go too deep into abstract reasoning, you don't come back out. Uh, because it will just take your life over. So don't go too deep. And yeah, that's all the tips I can give you guys. And hopefully those tips, you know, made some sense in some way. Uh, I know a lot of this video might have just been saying, oh, abstract reasoning is horrible. Um, it's the worst section. I would say I'm over-exaggerating. Uh, you can do the UCAT perfectly well. You can come out of it with a great score, really. Um, as long as you just do the basics right. Now, if you want to see more tips in depth, maybe, possibly, if you want me to do some questions, possibly, I could do that. I could go back into the UCAT for you guys. You know, I'll do anything for you guys. So I could even go back into that um, part of my revision journey. Uh, and I could, I could do some questions again if you guys want me to. Um, I don't really know why that would help. Maybe it might help you guys um, just to see where I'm thinking, why you're meant to be doing questions. All right, I'll do that. Let me know. And um, yeah, that's all for the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like. Uh, please, please subscribe. Please. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. All right.